Hey everybody, hope you're doing good. So as the thumbnail suggests today, we're going to be talking about these. Should we be using our red lights in our enclosures or not? So I'm going to give you my thoughts on that when we come back on Intrepid Exotics. I've got a little diva here. She's a Florida king snake and just a gorgeous little girl. I had her since she was about the size of a pencil. And uh, she's been doing really good and thriving for me. So, let's see if we can get the camera to focus in on her a little bit. Show you some of that shiny little head of hers. But, um, so yeah, we're talking about these uh, red lights today. And, you know, should we be keeping those in our enclosures? The um, reason why I'm doing it today is um, one I was going through one of my old videos today and had seen that I had intended to put it out right after that one and mentioned it and I never got around to doing this got sidetracked and went to another video so um, I figured it was about time I put it out really quick um, and I'll do that I'll do that pretty frequently I'll go through because you know we all we all learn things about these animals every day you know and as you learn things you're you're your uh, viewpoints should change with new information. Um, you don't hold on to antiquated beliefs um, just because they were right yesterday because you may learn something today that um, proves that you're maybe um, under the wrong impression and maybe need to change something. And I think that happens a lot um, when we're talking about this topic of these red lights. So, so just really quickly, um, you know, I'm not going to say definitively one way or the other. Absolutely, no, don't ever use them. Um, or, you know, I, I can't with a clear conscience sit here and say that they're good for your snakes either. Um, and that's all based on, on the research that I've done. Um, of course, I've got some. When you're first getting into reptiles, I mean, these things have been in the box for years. Because, you know, you're, you're always running through and you're wanting to find, you know, as much of the stuff that you're going to need to take care of your animals and so forth. And, you know, you may ask some somebody at a pet store or something that doesn't have a whole lot of experience with snakes and they might point them out to you. And you take it home, you plug it in and you think everything's cool. And then, you know, all the lights go off and you're like, oh, yeah, I can turn this red light on. Man, it looks so cool reflecting off that skull in my enclosure and whatnot. But, I mean, our first concern needs to be for the well-being of the animals that are in that enclosure and as we all know snakes don't have eyelids so they don't have the opportunity to you know manage you know manage how much light they're exposed to outside of crawling into a burrow crawling up under the substrate like she does all the time and um we've got to take that into consideration now there's there there's some people that say the snakes can't see red light and I've found studies where they've looked at the uh, rods and cones of the snake's eyes and determined that they can see it. And I've heard, you know, other studies say that they see it to a lesser degree than we do. This girl right here, she's a burrower. She likes to stay in her, in her bedding a lot. So, you know, you could probably leave that light on at night and she'd be fine. Because if it, if it bothers her, all she's got to do is crawl up under the substrate um, or jump into her hide. But the, the problem that I see with it is you can't look at an animal, you can't look at anybody and see the world through their eyes. You can't see what this snake sees. We can look up studies and we can give our best guesses as to, you know, how these guys interact with the world and how they see everything, but it's just a guess. So... What if we're guessing that they can't see red light? What if we're guessing that it doesn't affect them at all? When in fact it does. And you've got an animal in there that's, that can't close its eyes and they're under this light 24 seven. It just doesn't seem like the best situation for them. So that's why I, that's why I don't use them. So what I do with mine is, oh, sorry girl. Got a little hiss out over that time. So you really got to pay attention when you're handling these guys. I don't want this girl killing me on camera. That would be bad. Um, but uh, 
but all my snakes are either on radiant heat panels or heat mats they're on 24 7 they're all run on a thermostat um, the lights in the room here stay on all day so they've got more ambient light and those go off pretty much when the sun goes down uh, so I do my best to provide these guys with, with as realistic a day-night cycle as I can. Um, some of my snakes will have, you know, ox well, they'll have lamps on top of their heaters. A little bit extra light, a little bit extra heat. But, um, you know, like I said, those are all set on timers. And all the lights go off at the same time in here. So it it affords them a really good night uh, day and night cycle. So if you're going to run LEDs, in your snake enclosures don't have them blaring you know have them have them toned down a little bit so that your your animals aren't continually blinded every time they turn around and stare into these lights um you know these guys do do really good you got to think about how they how they live in the wild you know shady areas under the foliage um you know under rocks under tree stumps um you know they'll get out in the sun and bask but when it's time for them to feel comfortable, they curl up into a dark spot and that's where they're at. So kind of think about that before you put too many spotlights on your, on your snakes all day long. You know, and, and keep in mind too, how would you feel if you didn't have any eyelids? And you lived in Alaska or something like that, you know, where the sun doesn't go down half the year. Uh, that'd be kind of hard, hard to manage. So anyway, that's my two cents on it. And little diva here she just shed again not too long ago and i wonder if i can get the camera to focus on that shiny little head of hers she is a gorgeous little girl you know we get so wrapped up in our big snakes that we've got a we've got a struggle to carry and all that stuff and sometimes it's easy to overlook how awesome some of these smaller snakes are uh, she's a really pretty girl she is really hyper and she's a lot of fun to handle so I hope that was helpful. Again, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, I'll be putting out new videos all week long. So um, I'm going to get her put back in her house. And it looks like she's ready to eat again. She's one of the best eaters in the house. She's actually one of the most uh, comical eaters in the house. I'll have to put up a video of that at some point too. And I go around and do my, my feeding videos. So y'all have a good one. Take care. I'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.